I'm Yin Yi, and you're watching Poets House Presents. I am on Long Island right now. Hi, okay, hi again, I guess. Well, uh, well. Mm. So I'm gonna be reading from The Year of Blue Water and a new manuscript that I have coming out called Dream of the Divided Field. Um, and The Year of Blue Water came out about a year ago, and I, um, I've really been on an incredible journey with it. I really have been touched by how many people have responded to the book um, in ways that both I expected, but also in ways that I didn't expect at all. Um, and it has a new resonance right now in the middle of this global pandemic that we're all experiencing. Um, I wrote this book in a moment of deep anxiety and over the span of about a year. Um, it was. I wrote in this way because I needed to get closer to an understanding of who I was and where I was. And it's um, it's been very um, comforting to come back to this series of poems that I wrote for myself in recovery from an emotional moment very similar to where I'm feeling right now and where I think probably a lot of people are feeling. Of, of feeling trapped and not kind of unsure of like where one's life will leave in a new context or new situation. So the poems that I chose from this book are very much kind of in conversation with the idea of being alone and being confined in a way to one's like own like mental capacity at a time, but also like literally um, how to respond to being at home and being alone. Um, in, in the ways that we're all kind of having to self-isolate right now. Um, I also picked poems that were kind of in direct conversation with emergency of like, um, there's one poem where I talk about communal emergency, um, but all of these poems, I chose them because I deeply believe that there is no mind-body divide and that the ways that we think um, and, and heal um, and survive are very much in connection with um, our bodies and what's going on with our bodies. So um, that's kind of what I read from in this book. And then I'm gonna read two poems from my new manuscript called Dream of the Divided Field. And um, that will be out in a couple of years, but the two poems that I selected, one kind of is uh, a, meditation through and about and with nature. So more in line with the kind of original, um, the original thoughts around this panel. And then another one is called self-care, which is kind of the ways that I had to think about um, mediating my body through the medical system and how emotionally, what kind of impact that has. Um, I think it has also a very different tenor now in the medical situation that we have now um, because what does it mean to take care of yourself when there are no like medical supplies available or medical attention available because so much of that is needed um, for people who have COVID. So um, yeah, I hope that we can all think and talk about these issues kind of anew through the poems I'm about to read. When I'm potting the plants, I think about this little life in my apartment I have not been home to help it grow. When the sun is treating lightly over winter months, it is so nice to talk to Robin over the phone. It is so nice to nail my poster back up, to put new lights along the wall. There are more ways I can be here. There are things I have not done. Maureen McLean tells Rebecca that in a moment of communal emergency, it is easy to lose ourselves. I repeat this to at least three more people within three days. This is personal. Now I'm writing in a panic. I need it to keep myself. I return sitting in the audience, listening to conversation like a sermon. How do we keep each other? I return sitting in another classroom, listening to Saskia hum Bob Dylan before he won a Nobel Prize right beneath the thumbprint of sun coming through the blinds. The blinds in the classroom that are on hardwood floors, like the ones I grew up with, 
stretching behind the front door, reading Rosewitch for the first time. How do we keep each other? Making notes of this all. Robin Toss Lewis describes beauty as a field of power. The search for land, for possession, for domination is all in service of a search for pleasure. Form gives space for something to exist. You have to dig in yourself to find what you'll put in it. Places you don't know appear. Poems are a way to ask for what exists, to invite what wants to be visible. Robert Hass has a poem named Fall. It is fall. Today at the farmer's market, I eased my eyes on chili peppers so bright and gangly and round that I couldn't hold them all. There were so many. I wondered what they all were holding. In the poem, Hass's me and you are picking mushrooms with a field guy. They get close to the names of things. What they take from the earth, they try to name in their bodies. What is it like to eat? The tongue splits for what the tongue wants, sour rolling on the bitterness of lime, the sweet tang of tomatoes. Without direction, Taylor gives me a carrot to eat because they are good and in season right now. The carrot is wet inside and sublime. Now I'm gonna move on to um, one poem from the new manuscript that I have called Dream of the Divided Fields. It will be out with One World um, in the next couple of years, probably 2022. And this is a poem called Self Care. I take off my binder before a massage and dream of top surgery, not having to wait for the masseur to ask about my abnormal desire to be inside this body once, easily identified and therefore easy to take care of. I'm not easy to take care of. I should just take care of myself. Ask a doctor to remove the parts that are reprehensible. Like when they break the nose in order to construct a better one, I bring a picture to the hairdresser. I bring a picture to the mirror where I cut my skin with my eyes. As a man, I've learned something of nationhood. The shape of a brook now straddled by a dam or choked by it. The second poem I want to read from this book, um, or this manuscript, I should say, is a poem called Landscape with a Hundred Turns, which I am going to scroll to because I don't have a printer here. Landscape with a Hundred Turns. When you turned into a hundred rooms, I returned each month as a door that opened only one. When you turned into a hundred rooms, the wind flung through each of them wailing and left a hundred songs in hopes you would return for it and me. And once finding a doe locked up, the trees blew up the mountain pass. I understood you had transformed into your multiple as the rain is different each step from the moon. Sleeping in a hundred rooms, a hundred dreams of you appear though by day your voice has frozen into standing stones. When you turn into a hundred rooms, I met with a mirror in each eye, your growing absence. When I moved, the shadows without you followed me. In the hundred rooms, I cannot pick one, for each combines into the other where I piece by piece the shadows you have ceased to remember. As the rain is different each day of the year, when I turned for you and hoped you returned to me, was it I who left and you who remained the same? For when you changed, I changed the furniture in the rooms. A hundred birds flew over a hundred fields. A mountain flowed into a hundred rivers, then ended. In a hundred rooms, I turned and turned, hoping to return to you. Oh, the chrysanthemums grew in the hundred rooms. Far in the past and far in the future were those numinous and echoing stars. So thank you for listening. Um, 
I'm Yin Yi, and I've been reading from The Year of Blue Water, my first book, and uh, my latest manuscript that will hopefully be out in 2022, Dream of the Divided Field. Um, and you have been listening to Post House Presents. I am on Long Island right now, uh, quarantining as everyone I pr think probably has been. And um, I have a sourdough loaf that I'm letting rise in the oven right now, very slowly, and the oven is not on. If you want any bread baking tips, you can, or any poetry, talk to me about poetry, you can find me on Twitter at, at Yin Yi with three underscores, underscore, underscore, underscore. Or on Instagram, I'm at Yin Yi dot doc X. And, um, or my website, which is yin yi.com, y a n y i i i.com. So, thank you so much. If you've enjoyed these programs, please consider giving a contribution to Poets House. For more than 30 years, they've kept the door wide open to everyone for the joy of poetry. Recently, they have temporarily had to shut the door and are reeling from the financial implications. Please give even a small donation if you can. Thank you.